Hello. In this video we're going to review how to draw up a vertical loop for marbles made out of wood. But sometimes it's important to review how not to do it, which is what happened to me in this case. I had drawn springs before and I, I assumed that deadly word, the spring method would work for marble loops as well. Let's br briefly review the spring method. You draw a circle, divide it in half, <coughs> get rid of the bottom semicircle, raise this up by half the distance you want between the coils. We don't need this line anymore. Now draw a radius. We'll go from the top corner to this bottom corner. Now that we have drawn that radius, that's the actual radius which will make up the, um, half of the spring. So let's make it into a group along with this little right hand side piece. Let's get rid of everything else. We need to leave a center in there. Because we will need that shortly. Now that we have the first uh, loop of our spring drawn, we can add on as many coils as we like. We will select that first one. We will do an edit copy, paste in place. Then we will move it up to line up with the next one. Now as you can see, we're starting to build our spring. We have two loops done now. Orientation, hit the circle, hold down the shift key, get it in the right face. Now we're going to use the follow me command. So first we have to highlight the path for follow me. Then we hit the follow me key. Hit the cross section. Now we have to wait a minute for SketchUp to generate the spiral. We should get a spring that has a round cross section. So it took a few seconds, but SketchUp finally generated our spring. Now let's get rid of this little cube box that we don't need anymore. And center up the spring. So if this technique can be used to, to build a spring, why can't the same technique be used to build a uh, marble? loop. Well it turns out that what happens to this um, it rotates the cross section you use as it goes around the spiral. We'll take a look at that in just a second. As you can see in this picture when I took a typical cross section for a marble loop as shown in the bottom left side and then I took that cross section and I followed the spring shape I got an unexpected result on the exit side notice uh, on the exit side in the back the bottom of the track is no longer horizontal it is rotated up so what happens when you use the spring method it actually twists that cross section as it goes around the loop so to make a long story short 
The spring method does not work for making marble loops. Might save you a lot of time and effort by, by not trying that method. Now let's see how to use SketchUp to draw a vertical loop for marbles out of wood. So here's a typical cross section of what a vertical loop would look like if you were looking down at the loop and you sliced a plane horizontally across the middle of the loop. So on the left hand side you would see the two tracks. Uh, in my case I'm using one inch diameter marbles. So my bottom of the track has to be a little bit bigger than an inch. You can use one on one sixteenth. I chose one one and an eighth on this one. Then you need uh, guard rails on the sides to keep the marble inside on the track. So I'm using three sixteenths inch Luon plywood for mine, and you can see those as well. My loop has a uh, the track is a uh, inner diameter of two inches as shown here. So It'll be a four inch ID on the outside. The OD of this is uh, bottom dimension is two and three eighths. So that'd be what four and three quarters on the OD. Now when you actually build this out of wood, you don't have to have the two divider tracks shown in the center. Um, you can get by just using one. But since that would be difficult, more difficult to draw in SketchUp, we'll just leave the two in here. Then if you decide to build this out of wood, you can use the two or you can decide just to do one. Okay, we drew a little uh, 3D box to help us pick the right orientations or right faces. Let's draw a circle first. And our ID of our main track is 2 inches. And our OD is 2 and 3 eighths. So we'll find the center. We'll go 2 and 3 eighths. We'll get rid of this little cube box we don't need anymore. Zoom extents on what we've got. Looks like we need to make our circles a little smoother, so we'll do Entity Info. Change that to 240 segments. Get them nice and smooth. Now oh, let's find the center. And mark that out. Now we have the center. SketchUp's a little slow responding today. Let's get rid of the bottom semicircle. Now this main part needs to be thicker than the one inch marble. So if you remember we chose to go inch and an eighth or nine eighths thickness. And there we have uh, half of our loop. Now let's take a front view of this. And this is where the whole trick of this method comes in. So if you remember from our cross-sectional drawing, we're going to want to raise um, this part up um, half, half the distance of a full loop. So it's inch and a half on a full loop, so we're going to want to raise it up three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch. So we'll highlight it. Um, we'll go to Tools and Move, but then we'll hold down the Alt key while we move the cursor to the area. Click on it, move it up, 
let go of the Alt key, type in 0.75, bingo. We've now got a critical piece for our loop. We're, from now on, we're just going to be rotating and copying this. So we'll make it a group. And we'll rotate it just to see how it looks. Looks good. Um, notice this little line on the right hand side. It must be a quirk of SketchUp. It doesn't bother anything. When you're done, you could right click the object, and I think it's called Soften Edges. will help you get rid of part of that. Now we're ready to build our loop. So we'll do edit, copy, edit, paste in place, tools, rotate, around the center, 180 degrees. Rotate it. Now move it so that the pieces are aligned. Now we have our uh, loop built. So we enter, say, on the bottom, and we uh, go around and exit on the top. Now that we have the main part of the track built, now we have to build the guide rails. And we only have to make one of those because we can uh, copy and or duplicate it for the other one. So let's go ahead and draw that one. We're going to use the same kind of technique. Um, the ID is 2 inches. The OD is 19 eighths. Let's find the uh, center of that. Get rid of the bottom areas if you remember my guide rails are made out of 3 16 material so now we're ready to move that left hand side up by that same three quarters of an inch so we do tools move <coughs> excuse me hold down the alt key start to move it up let off the alt key type in 0.75 and we got it that's our building block for our guide rail we'll make a group and take a look at it looks pretty good has the same kind of line showing up on the right hand side as the other one did but it doesn't bother anything now that we've got our first segment we're, <clears throat> we're ready to copy and uh, move it so we'll do uh, edit copy edit paste in place tools rotate 180 degrees. Going to have to move it up in the correct alignment. For the other piece. And there it is.
and we'll go ahead and make that a group. So if you take the inner track piece that we made, and then you copy and make two of the guardrails for the sides, and you put those three pieces together, I'm not going to show you all the steps on this video, but uh, when they're all put together, here is a vertical marble loop with a four inch inside diameter. That's a one inch marble. In this case, uh, let's say it's going to the right to left, so it's entering the loop and then it would exit on the back side. Now if we rotate this you'll notice that the bottom of the track piece on the back is horizontal as it should be. Remember when we tried the spring design it was not horizontal it was actually twisted. So this is the proper shape for a vertical loop. You could repeat this and uh, if you had enough drop height, you could add another loop on, or you can change the uh, entry uh, angle or the exit angle. The purpose of this video is just to show you that trick of taking the piece of the cross section and moving it, which creates the spiral piece. Now here's an example of once you know how to draw the basic vertical loop you can make modifications to fit your project. Here's an example where I wanted a 30 degree to the vertical entry ramp which means it has to enter at 30 degrees below the right horizontal of the loop and then I'm going to have a horizontal exit so I have a short piece of exit track as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video and you can quickly and easily draw vertical uh, marble loops and I hope you don't waste your time on the spring method like I do. Good luck with your projects. Thank you.